So as San Francisco State University completes its first semester using the Canvas Learning Management System as part of a year-long transition from our longtime use of iLearn, we wanted to hear from our SF State students as to their experience with this transition and their early impressions of Canvas. So um, welcome everybody to our panel, preparing for the shift, student perceptions of the Campus Canvas transition in which we are joined by five SF State students who will share their perspectives and observations using Canvas this fall. We wanted to create a space to connect our students and the voice of our students regarding this important Canvas transition to the campus. Um, the panel is sponsored by the Academic Technology Advisory Committee, a committee which brings together faculty administrators and IT providers to assess and plan for needs around technology at is, as it as it is used in teaching, learning, and research. A uh, special thanks goes out to Gus Vucheles, chair and faculty member in the Department of Family, Interiors, Nutrition, and Apparel for helping to plan the event. And we do hope to offer more student-focused engagements throughout spring. And so please keep an eye out for that, including additional, uh, additional engagements around our Canvas transition. My name is Andrew Roderick, and I oversee the Academic Technology Unit here at San Francisco State University, and I'll be moderating today's panel. Um, and full disclosure, um, I do oversee the teams responsible for participating in the transition. However, um, all panelists have been encouraged to speak completely openly about their experiences, both the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're all really here to learn from them as to their perspectives and so that, you know, in particular, we can tune our work to the observations and the needs that they might describe to us here today. So um, please provide a warm emoticon welcome to our uh, five student panelists. And I'm going to give an, an, an introduction to each. Um, we're actually missing one of our panelists here now. And so if they show up, we'll integrate them in. So I did say five, but we have four. And I'm really grateful for them attending. Ian Chan is a senior in the Recreation Parks and Tourism Department who is new to Canvas this semester and has been a student here at San Francisco State University since fall 2019. Larissa Gareka Ruiz, I'm sorry, uh, is a senior majoring in studio arts with a minor in museum studies. She transferred here to, uh, to San Francisco State University from Southwestern College in Southern California. Welcome, Larissa. Marie Shimitsu is a first year graduate student in the computer science department. Marie completed her undergraduate degree in Japan where she majored in communications. Welcome, Marie. And Andre Sloda is an extended education student majoring in geodesy and land management. Andre is an exchange student from Ukraine. And so thank you to all our students for um, joining us. And um, we're gonna hear from them now. I'm gonna ask them a set of guided questions after which uh, we're gonna give our attendees an opportunity to uh, add any additional questions they might have from what they hear in this session or otherwise. And so please attendees use the Q and A uh, function at the bottom of the Zoom screen to submit any of those questions along the way and then our team will be pulling those together. We'll be selecting from those at the end. So, um, so thank you so much for joining. Uh, panelists, are you ready? Can give us a thumbs up. Uh, great. And so, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read off a question, then kind of call on you, and we'll go around and we'll switch the ordering around and kind of mix it up. Does that sound good? Great. Okay. So, if you could tell us about your experience transitioning to Canvas this fall. And um, and if Canvas is new to you, tell us what it was like. Um, if you're using Canvas and iLearn at the same time, you might also address that. And um, you know, what was it like for you? What did you What do you like? What do you not like? Um, kind of an open ended question, but we want to hear from you. And I'm Ian. I'm going to start with you. So this semester, I took uh, courses in Canvas and iLearn. Uh, three were on Canvas. One was on iLearn. Um, the transition, I think it took a while to get adjusted, but it wasn't that bad. I believe that uh, once the weeks went by, then it's like, okay, I'm familiar. 
how to submit. And it kind of was like similar to iLearn, but in a different format. Great, thank you. Andre, tell us about your experiences. Um, I have only one class where we use Canvas and uh, another three classes we use in iLearn. And actually, um, I got used to Canvas about a month and uh, it wasn't very hard because uh, during my classes, we usually use Canvas only for like um, really small assignments or just for links. So it wasn't very hard actually. Great, thank you. Marie, tell us about your experiences. Um, I have three classes that's on Canvas and two classes are on iLearn. Um, I think Canvas are more intuitive and um, it, I'm new to Canvas, but uh, one of the class, uh, the in professor actually went over how to use it, how to submit it, that helped. But overall, it's very intuitive. I prefer uh, Canvas over iLearn. The hardest part right now is more of like, because since we have two platforms to um, look after kind of uh, watch which assignment uh, it's due and Canvas will tell you it's uh, on to-do list. That's very helpful. So yeah, I, I'm liking uh, Canvas. Thank you. And last but not least, Larissa, what are your experiences? So I did have some experience with Canvas in college when I was there at first. And then when I transferred here to the SFSU, uh, it was kind of a shock for me because honestly, I learned seemed a little bit outdated. And I believe Canvas has a lot more options for to have um, more access, more organization. I, I think it's, a uh, really amazing resource for students. And it also has the calendar for us that makes it a lot of easier. And I do have uh, classes on both Canvas and iLearn. I think it's a little bit um, confusing to have them on both right now because we have to change between applications. So I can't wait for um, the transition to Canvas. But I do think it's a lot more organized than I learned in my experience. Great, thank you all. And um, and kind of a theme here is that, um, and and I guess a campus concern is that over the over this academic year, we are teaching in both Canvas and iLearn, and all of you are experiencing that um, that sort of parallel work across learning management systems. And there was concerns about how that would affect students. Um, can you just sort of, so you've all kind of touched on this already, but can you just briefly um, touch on the challenge uh, or how how it's helped, you know, how you've kind of made it through kind of balancing courses between the two learning management systems? Has it been an overwhelming challenge? Has it kind of worked for you? Um, and are you used to it now? And, and we know Larissa is looking forward to fall 2023 when we will be fully on Canvas as a campus. Um, news, so everybody on, on this understands that point, but uh, let's just go back around in the same order and just a quick kind of comment on what that experience across learning management systems was like for you. Ian, we'll start with you again. Yeah, um, I mean, Canvas was, uh, I forgot to mention, but Canvas is new uh, to me. I, uh, I would not say it was an overwhelming uh, transition. It was more of like a okay, like uh, learning how to manage uh, two different platforms, um, navigating, like understanding like what the deadlines are for different assignments, and then uh, just uh, get the work done. Andre? Mm, it was not very difficult to me uh, because um, at my home university, we use, um, system which are similar to Euler and actually I was using um, uh, Canvas before as well so it wasn't very hard. And Marie? I think as you said the pearl 
um, work is kind of hard because um, all the assignment deadline is not on one platform. And I have a lot of assignments since I'm taking five classes. Um, so it was not overwhelming per se, but I did have, uh, I did make um, Google Sheet to create all the assignment and um, organize it in my way so that I don't miss the assignment um, in case I don't check either uh, platform by accident. Great, Larissa. I also agree with Ian and, and Marie. I mean, it wasn't very overwhelming for me, but it was like a step more that we had to take to be more organized with our assignments. I, same as Marie, I did, I had to do a, a spreadsheet with all of my assignments to have them all in one place. But I mean, I don't think it was really overwhelming, just a step that we could have saved. Great, thank you. Thank you. So our next question. So part of this transition is also involved our instructors who, uh, many of whom are teaching in Canvas for the first time. And that tra this transition has impacted our instructors as they have um, both uh, worked to learn a new learning management system and to uh, reestablish course materials and activities in that new learning management system. So I'd like to get from you um, what your experience has been in um, in really uh, being the student in courses where instructors are kind of like adapting to Canvas, um, how and, and how has that worked for you? Have you have you kind of noticed them experimenting with different things, or you know changing things up, or making mistakes, or has it gone really well for you? And you know, kind of what does that look like on the student side of things as our instructors make this transition? And I'm going to start with Larissa this time. So, Larissa. Well, on my ex the experience that I have with my instructors and on Canvas, it's I think we have been learning at the same time. Um, for example, I had an experience with one of my professors that had to configure some more settings because because we we were not receiving the notifications on of the inbox of Canvas and announcements. So I think it's just. Uh, we have to be patient with that. And I also think, uh, at least on my experience with the courses that I have on Canvas, uh, I think Canvas has a lot of good resources for organizing everything and that are not being like used very much. But I think um, with the time, it can be better. Thank you, Larissa. Um... Let's see, let's go with Andre now. Okay. Yeah, as Larissa said, um, my professor also, he was studied with us, but it wasn't very hard, very difficult because um, he's always open to cooperation. And one important thing that he sent letters with reminders. So everything was very easy and very smooth. Marie? I think all the professor who is uh, adapting to Canvas, we have experience in some sort. So we didn't really encounter any issue um, in my class. So. And so, yeah, and so we do have a number of lecturer faculties who've been using Canvas for quite some time in community college. So that probably is yours and others experience as well. Ian, what what's, what have you seen in your uh, from your instructor's uh, use of Canvas and, and preparation for it? Yeah, for uh, one of my classes, uh, which was on Canvas, it was RPT 205. Uh, at first it was a, a good start, but then I think at some point, I think it was week three or week four of the semester, um, there was some technology technology issues. Uh, so I guess the, the different approach was uh, have a, a self-paced deadline for the assignments that um, that did not make it onto the 
weekly modules. So I think that uh, took some time, but it wasn't that bad. Great, thank you. Um, and it, it sounds like, um, as uh, Andre mentioned, that uh, one of the factors that helped smooth out the use of Canvas was just sort of an openness with the instructor to kind of engage with the students. You know, what did that look like as the semester started out? Um, uh, Andre, just kind of bringing it back to you. I mean, what did that look like to kind of like say, you know, did, did the instructor say, hey, I'm new to this too, everybody, you know, let's kind of work together on this and let me know if you're seeing something. Oh, well, if there were any delays or problem with that system, um, the professor thought, okay, um, like, don't worry, it's not your fault. And it's not like, you know, something very, very bad. Um, we can extend our uh, like assignments and you can like send me uh, all information through the mail. Uh, it's not like mandatory to send it only through the canvas. Don't worry about that. And if we have any questions, we like we we had like very nice cooperation, I'd say. So for me, it's like really, really nice experience. Great, thank you. So um, I'd like to hear what things uh, your instructors have done in in your Canvas courses that have made it easier for you to engage with the materials. And I'll start with you, Larissa, because you did bring up um, sort of some maybe lost opportunities that you had seen maybe from your previous experience using Canvas. Um, but talk a little bit about uh, what your instructors have done to kind of make it easier and, and maybe some things that you would hope that they would do to make it easier. Well, uh, first I think Canvas, Canvas design of the, the actual design of the website is very easier to read compared to iLearn. So I think that it's a very good benefit of it. And something that I noticed with my professors is the that they, at least on Canvas, that I that I like to compare with my um, previous classes in college is that um, most of them will show all the, all the information of the course at the main page of the course in Canvas. So I think that could be better um, to use two different folders to put the actual files on the files window instead of showing all of them at the main page because it can be confusing or can a little bit more confusing for students. Um, and also the communications through the Canvas inbox. I think that's a really good advantage of it. And we also have access to communicate with another students of the course. And that's something that we've been using a lot on the courses that I have in Canvas. Thanks. Uh, Marie, uh, same question. Um, I, uh, one of my class is, um, professor has a really, really organized uh, module. So it's um, going through weekly, week one, and then the date of the class, and then all the material for that day is in that class so if you miss class because it's in-person class uh you can go back to it or like if you want to refer to some material you can go back to that day and it's easily easier to find it so i really like um that organization um and another thing i like as Relisa said was canvas inbox it is nice tool to um engage with other classmates as well as uh, um, instructor too, because we can send message to them. Things that can be improved um, would be, um, so another, the main page when you go to that class page, every information is that 
in that page, like from like syllabus to um, like class material, like each like weekly um, glance. And it's kind of like a lot to process. I would rather have, because they, other class, they have like a syllabus tub and stuff like that. So I hope, um, I kind of hope that professor um, categorize in different page so that it's easier to navigate. But yeah, other than that, that's my experience. Thanks, Marie. Ian. Uh, let's see. I think about, uh, yeah, just piggybacking off what Larissa and Marie said, there's great organization in the Canvas, uh, so it's easier for uh, students to find like what specific uh, uh, assignments that need to be done. I also think about uh, how accessible it is in a way to like uh, navigate through uh, week by week, and I think something that can be improved. Uh, it would be I, I think sometimes uh, a like for a discussion, sometimes it may not get posted. So there may be like some trial and error and then it can be a little bit stressful for the student have to like retype it all over again into a, into a discussion. So I think, I think that's like just going back to like technology issues sometimes. Yeah. Whoops, sorry. And that's part of the experimentation that we talked about earlier. Um, uh, trial and error, a little bit of that experience, uh, Ian, is what you're describing. And Andre, uh, Andre, your your perspectives. Mm, well, as what as was mentioned before, like in Canvas. Everything is uh, conveniently divided into different sections, so it's more easier to navigate there. And um, actually, like uh, in my class, we only had one book and few references to documents. So, so like there really is not much to improve on because uh, we don't use like Canvas too much. And um, we also. Actually, we also, uh, we also load the test into the canvas and it's very convenient scene. Uh, so the point principle, uh, everything was organized and simple item. Everything was really nice. Great, thank you. So our next question. Um, so we've, uh, the campus right now is, uh, has about 75% of our courses are being offered in person and about 25% remote. I'm assuming you all may have a mix of sort of remote and in-person courses. Uh, we've just come out of, a, you know, the last two years of fully remote instruction to mostly remote instruction to partially remote instruction to whatever we're at right now. And maybe it feels a little more normal this semester and maybe it doesn't. I don't know. It's uh, but um, but in any case, you know, with all of that kind of perspective in mind, we've all just come out of something that within the context of our courses um, has created a lot more focus on the use of the learning management system. And um, so I'm wondering, I, I'm just kind of trying to get at your um, how that has impacted you here in fall 2022 as you're both kind of managing across two learning management systems. You're in courses where your instructors are learning new learning management systems. And you may be in a mix of sort of in-person and remote courses that use and rely upon the learning management systems in different ways where in-person maybe you relies on it a little less and remote relies on it a little more. Um, maybe, uh, so I'd like to go around and sort of one, get a sense for, do you have a mix of remote and uh, in-person courses? And do you notice a difference in how that's used and how, you know, and how does the Canvas transition fit into all of that? It's a big kind of question. So take whatever perspective you would like to have. And Andrea, I'm going to start with you on this one. Mm, well, so I prefer in-person classes. So, so that's why I choose all of them. 
So all my classes only in person. Okay, great. And Marie, what, what's your perspective? Are you, do you have a mix of remote and in-person? Um, I All my classes are in-person and, and yeah. And Ian? A mixture of in-person and online. And what's that like for you? And, you know, with, again, in the context of this Canvas transition to learning management systems and everything you've been through as a student for the last two years. And I'll also point out again that Ian uh, came to SF State prior to COVID. So he's one of those students that kind of was enrolled prior to COVID and went through the whole 2020 thing and has and is still with us here. So uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I think it really like just opened a new perspective. Like I assumed that every, that all my semesters were gonna be in person, but then uh, as everyone knows, since the COVID outbreak, then it was like switching to remote. Uh, I, I think from my perspective, I think it can present its challenges and uh, benefits. I think, uh, Within the COVID year, I think it was pretty convenient just to like log in on a computer and then uh, call it a day. But I think managing uh, in person and online for this semester, I, I think it's not as stressful as it was from 2020 and 2021. Uh, I think because you get that supportive system and feeling that, you know, uh, we're all in this together, I think, despite the challenges it presents. Yeah. And has the Canvas transition had any, I mean, has it made, did it make you wish that we had Canvas prior to this? Or I mean, any, any kind of uh, perspective on that, you know, like to hear from that? Yeah, I, I think I would have loved if Canvas was introduced earlier on, I think, uh, I think just navigating through iLearn on an online can be a bit stressful because you don't know where assignments are. It may be like spread out. And it's sometimes it's just hard to find out where, what's what, and not in categories that it's organized for students to, students and myself included to just find where it is, I think. Uh, like what's been discussed, Canvas is more organized than iLearn. Yeah. Larissa. I also agree with Ian. I think my, my courses, the courses that I have from my minor that are from museum studies, they have a lot of theory. We have a lot of files to read, a lot of lectures. And I do have those two classes on Canva. So I think that's way easier than having them on iLearn and just a struggle to navigate through them. Um, because comparing with my studio arts major, my classes are more practical. So we don't have a lot of files to read or lectures. And those are the classes that I have in iLearn. So it's not really a big issue for me, but it's right now but I, it's way easier to have um, those files and everything on, on, on Canvas. I do have just one online class, but it's also practical. So we don't actually, it's on iLearn right now and we don't actually use the platform very much. We just um, do more Zoom meetings, most of it. Great. Great, and that's a good transition. I'd, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, sort of there's there's the main learning management system, Canvas or iLearn, but there's also integrations like Zoom. And um, yeah, if you're doing remote courses, Zoom probably figures into that. Um, but there's other kinds of integrations as well. You might have Turnitin or you might have, uh, some of you may be in a course that uses lecture capture where the lectures are recorded in person and then brought into the course. So I wanted to kind of hear from you what 
what what kinds of additional kinds of learning technologies or applications are maybe being used in your courses and how do those are those integrated into the learning management system and how does that work for you and are there any of those that you have really made a difference and really helped your experience in addition to the learning management system marie i'll start with you um so one of the class is kind of like asynchronous even though it's in fully in person um uh, professor will record the court like during the lecture and uh, upload it to the canvas and i find it really helpful especially you know COVID is still around i got flu and uh even though i couldn't attend in-person class before if you couldn't attend in-person class then you will probably collect the notes from your classmates but now you have you know you can uh, watch the lecture again and again and you know before the final before the midterm uh, it's a really helpful tool uh, that we have so I really appreciate that function um, yeah are there any other technologies in addition to that? You, you, what you described is lecture capture, but I presume maybe the person is recording it in some other format um, within a standard classroom. Um, I think I'm not sure because it's um, it's almost like a share screen. They just capture it probably using Zoom and upload the video. I am not sure about the technology behind it. Okay. Um, any other technologies used, Marie, that you come to mind? Um, not at this point. Great. Thank you. Andre. any other technologies and are they integrated or not? Uh, like in my classes, we use Zoom to communicate with professors or for office hours, and I find it really convenient as it saves time, first of all. And actually, that's it. Larissa? Larissa? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, the only other one that we use um, on my online class is Zoom. We just use Zoom meetings, and I do agree with Marie also. I've had some classes in the past in college where professors would record the meeting and submit it on Canvas so we can revisit that, and it was really helpful in especially right now that there's um, there's COVID, there's a lot of uh, different aspects that we have to take care of. of. And, and yeah, that's the only, the only one actually, but I really think it's, it will be very helpful to, for my professor to record the class because um, they don't. Great, thank you. And Ian? Oh uh, yeah, it's been pretty much been Zoom for like the online classes that I take. Uh, yeah, anytime um, we a student miss a class for for any reason, it gets posted on Canvas. So yeah, it's just Zoom. Just sort of an interesting side question. Um, you know, we heard from. Uh, Marie and Larissa, how valuable they find uh, the recorded lectures. Um, in cases like that, do you ask your, do you ever ask, feel feel open enough to ask your instructors, you know, gee, this would really help me or work for me. I've seen another instructor do it. Can you guys do this? Do you ever have those conversations? Any of you want to kind of jump in and answer that? I haven't had that conversation because I, I also think that it's, like, a, I don't know if it's like a personal um, decision for the professor to do that. Um, and I also, I'm not sure if it's gonna be very difficult for them to uh, try it because they've had some issues with Zoom also before. So it's more like to make it easy for them. Anyone else has? Marie? 
Yeah, I think so. One of my professor, he has both like remote class and in person class for the same, but different but same class. And I'm in in person class, and um, so for a remote class, he will upload a video on um, it's iLearn, but he will upload his the video to iLearn to make it available to student. But for somehow in person student like in person class, he will not have anything, and he will not um, let because. I, there's one point I was sick and I was able to attend the class and I request that because uh, I know uh, from other students from that remote section, I um, he make it available. So I asked him if he can um, make it available for me, but um, he said no, because it is an in-person class. So that was kind of... Uh, um, I was bummed out because of that. Um, uh, cause I, I literally just wanted to study. So I, I am not sure if like why that you know, that happened, but that was my experience. Thank you. Any others on that question? If you've approached your instructors? No. Okay. I just turning my attention to the attendees right now. I'd mentioned earlier about submitting any questions on your end, um, and I want to encourage you all to do so right now. I mean, we've got a couple more questions from our end, and then we would like to open it up to all of you, and the mechanism for you to do that is to press that Q&A button. I see we've got one in now, but love to have more of your questions. So if anything we've been talking about now has triggered a sort of an extended or alternative question for you, or if you're just uh, really interested in kind of hearing the student's perspective about anything else. And um, we can also go a little bit beyond Canvas if you've got a non-Canvas question too, now that we have everyone together. So just kind of putting that out there and I'm gonna ask my next question now to the group. Um, so um, the mobile app side of the learning management system is a feature that can be really valuable and convenient. Um, there is a mobile app on the iLearn side, and there's a um, and and there's a mobile app on the Canvas side as well. I wanted to just kind of see if any of you use it, how valuable you find it, and in what ways you might use it. Ian, I'm going to start with you this time. Uh, what, what was the question again? Uh, relating to the mobile app and, oh. you know, particularly in Canvas on the Canvas side, but how have you, how important is that to you? Um, do you find the Canvas version of the mobile app really useful? Just any perspectives on that? Yeah. Um, I did not know about the mobile app until like later. Uh, I think how I learned did not have a mobile app and uh, it's pretty useful when there's a Canvas uh, mobile app. Uh, maybe like in case, like I may not go look it up using my computer, but uh, it's right there in front of, uh, for me to see like any deadlines, uh, whatever assignments that needs to be completed. Um, I think it's easy to just navigate and like, put your own settings so that whatever is easier to uh, navigate, then uh, stick with that. Yeah. Okay, and, and for the rest of you on the mobile app question, just open it up. If you don't have anything, any perspective on it, that's fine. But if you, you know, if you have used it or you find something really valuable um, in how you use it, love to hear about that. Do you, anyone wanna jump in on that? Uh, yeah, I can give my opinion on that. Um, I honestly don't have the mobile app right now, but I remember I was using that back in college because I don't know, I don't have a lot of classes on campus right now to have the app, but I truly recommend it and it's very easy to navigate instead of putting, pulling up iLearn on your phone and on the on Safari and everything. And also setting your no notifications on from Canvas, it was really helpful for me back then and for the assignments and to have the messages from professors and just keep on track of, of your classes. 
I also, yeah, I also love mobile app. I have mobile app and also app for iPad. Um, whenever I don't have access to um, the laptop, then I will use mobile app and I have iCloud. So whenever I forget to submit something or uh, anything not on hand, I can just, um, the iCloud file, you can link it to the Canvas. So it's really useful. Anything to add, Andre? Mm, actually, I didn't know that there is a mobile app for Canvas. And actually, I don't need it right now because I have only one class. So, but I know that there is a uh, same application for iLearn and actually it's really helpful, I'd say. So I believe that there is same thing with uh, Canvas. Great, yeah, and so, and, and just uh, Ian, Ian had mentioned he didn't find the iLearn mobile app. There is actually one. Um, and, um, and what we do find with mobile apps in particular for students is they're quite valuable in terms of reviewing assignments and deadlines and things like that. And actually conducting activities, they tend to, students tend to fall back on their computer or their uh, more regular device. Um, so just thought I'd add that in um, for the audience. Um, well, I see we have a few questions in. And so what I'd like to do is, uh, is now flip over to our audience submitted questions. We've got about 15 minutes left here in this panel. And I really appreciate everybody uh, um, asking, uh, adding some questions in. Um, and so I'll go through. The first question is, um, did your instructors tend to work off the Canvas site during your class time? Many of you, you know, are really in the context of an in-person class, or was it more of a tool that students used on their own as they chose, or a little bit of both? And um, I, I'm going to just open this up, and you can kind of jump in. And if you step on each other, I'll I'll call on one person. So um, any of you can jump in and answer that question, Larissa. Yeah, I I would like to say it, it was more on both. Uh, with my in-person classes, we don't um, use them that much, but I really appreciate that my teachers from my in-person classes usually take like a couple minutes during class to pull Canvas on the projector and just uh, to show where the that a specific assignment or file that we're talking about is located. So that can be really helpful, helpful especially for people that it's not very familiar with Canvas. Anyone else? I mean, the question really is, you know, does your does your instructor open up Canvas in class and go through stuff and kind of actively use it? Or do they give lecture and not really refer to Canvas in the classroom, but um, but expect students to go and and work, you know, outside of class time? Marie, do you have a perspective on that? I saw you nodding your head. Um, it's it's both actually. Two of my professor, two of the classes, um, the professor will go on the Canvas and show um, how to do it, and also the. Um, they use a discussion feature during the class so that we can uh, come up with the talk in the discussion panel while class. So yeah, we use uh, Canvas a lot in the class. Great, thank you. Um, next question, is there a particular practice, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, my screen got a little messed up here. Is there a particular practice that your faculty member have done uh, uh let me let me try to reword this um is there a particular practice your faculty have have used in how they communicate about the course site either in emails or in class that are kind of useful to you to help really make sure you know what you need to be doing in the learning management system any of you can answer that 
I had one of my teachers that um, was trying to make some announcement through announcements through Canvas. We actually received the announcement and we didn't because we didn't have the the application open. And I believe she actually had to activate an option for us to receive an email every time she sent an announcement. So I think that was really helpful too because we don't always check the application. So it's very good to receive a, an alert or something through email also. Others? Um, okay. Uh, usually my professor, uh, they send us mails so with reminders about our task, about our assignments. So it was also like easy way to communicate with us. And it was really helpful because sometimes you can forget about assignment or you can be overwhelmed and it really helps. Thanks. Anybody else on that question? So here's another question about discussion forums and people uh, keep popping new questions in. So um, for discussion posts, um, the question reads, I hear Canvas apparently has a like feature where you're, if your instructor enables this functionality, it lets the instructors or fellow students like a post. Um, how do you as students feel about this? And maybe have, have you seen, have you used the discussion forums that had that enabled? And if so, what was that like? And if not, how would you feel about that? Ian. Yeah, um, I did see the like feature from one of my classes. I think it was based off on the discussion uh, posts. Um, how would I feel about that? Um, I, I mean, like, it, it it may not be necessary, but I, I think there could be different opinions, but I think uh, from my perspective, I don't think it's that necessary. I think uh, if you wanted to like compliment like something, like whatever if it was a, something that stuck out to you, I think there's like um, in a small section where you can reply, uh, for a specific student post like saying like oh uh i think this whatever you said may have stood out to me or i can re i can resonate because so and so so yeah that's just my perspective anybody else yeah on on my perspective um i think it's a really nice feature uh i had one professor back in college that for discussion posts, we'll say that we have to make a discussion post. We have to um, type an answer to two of uh, our classmates and to just like another two posts. So I think it's a very interactive way of using that also. Okay, we're, we're kind of at the 10 minute mark here and we've got questions continuing to stream in. Um, so what, what is most helpful for you when you work through the modules in Canvas and what would you like to see more of? I, I agree with Marie where she mentioned that it was very helpful for us to have every module with uh, by weeks, divided by weeks and with the dates. I think that's something that I really liked before that not uh, my professors are using right now, but I think um, it's a really good way of using that. Um, yeah, I... I mentioned that earlier, I really like that function. And also, if not, then like 
um, categorized by like topics. Let's say this week, because I'm a computer science, not uh, computer science major, like this, like this week or like this next two weeks, we're going to do uh, concurrency or like this, like next three weeks, we're going to do something else. Then we know where to find resource better. And that is very important to me. Sometimes only just week will not give me a good um, glance of like, oh, I don't remember what I did in week one. So I have to go through every week to see if I'm like learning concurrency or something like that. So it really depends on the uh, subject, but I really like the big, like uh, the chunk of information that's provided there as a module. Ian, Andre, anything to add? No? Okay. So how did you get to your courses um, in Canvas through iLearn or through canvas.sfsu.edu? Um, I think it depends. Usually I get through my Canvas courses through iLearn because I have more courses on iLearn, so it's easy for me to navigate through that. Um, yeah, I'm usually doing it through iLearn. Ian? Uh, I, I've been doing it uh, like through Canvas. Yeah, that link, canvas.sfsu.edu. Yeah. OK, Marie? I, yeah, I have, if it's I learn, then I'll go to I learn. I have bookmark for both of the websites. So I'll just click canvas.sfsu.edu or if it's I learn, I'll just go I learn and click that uh, bookmark. And Andre? Um, usually I do that to I, I learn because I have more classes there and yeah. more easier, I think. Yeah, and the, and the context for that question too is that academic technology did build an integration so that students will always see their Canvas courses in iLearn and be able to link out to them to help reduce any uh, confusion or I can't find my course kinds of questions. But it sounds like you've also all found canvas.sfsu.edu. Um, okay, there's a peer review tool in Canvas. I've heard using, the question is, I've heard that using Peer review is a little clunky in Canvas. Did any of you use peer review in your classes and were you easily able to see feedback? Peer review come up for any of you. I, I personally yeah, haven't how? used it, I saw it. Uh, okay, Marie and then Larissa, go ahead. Okay, so I personally haven't used peer review function or a professor didn't use it, but we had peer review session using a discussion, but then there's a peer review sheet on Google Doc. So pause that on discussion. So I, I don't so really know about it. Sounds like they farmed that feature out. <laughs> yeah, I, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, Larissa? Yeah, same as Marie. I haven't, I'm not familiar with it. I haven't used it on my experience. Okay, so it sounds like none of you have experienced that function. Okay, and then last, uh, before we wrap this up, uh, somebody asked, uh, is there anything that you feel iLearn does better than Canvas for you and, and that you kind of maybe will miss when we move to Canvas? Or well, you know, won't. I know some of you are looking forward to not using <laughs> iLearn anymore. But uh, any anything that you kind of might miss from nobody has any particular perspectives, and it's pretty much our students often aren't. You know, they just want to do the work and get a grade and move on to the next thing, right? <laughs> right, students. <laughs> All right, well, that's uh, that's uh, the end of the submitted questions from our attendees. And we're at time now for this uh, student panel. And so uh, first I'd like to thank all of our attendees today that um, attended and asked questions and um, were here. And uh, just a nod out to our future viewers that will watch this, the recorded version of this as well. 
Um, but I really want to extend a, uh, an appreciation to our four panelists today, um, Ian, Andre, Larissa, Marie, thank you so much for attending and sharing your perspective. As mentioned, this panel was hosted by the Academic Technology Advisory Committee and look out in spring for additional student-focused uh, events and webinars that help us understand the teaching and learning with technology that we do here at San Francisco State from the perspective of our students, which is very, very important to us. And so thank you. Thanks thanks to the four of you for attending. Um, and uh, I hope everybody has an excellent uh, final exam period and everybody has an excellent holiday and winter break or a winter session or wherever you're moving to next. And um, we, uh, we uh, are gonna sign off now on this panel until next time. So thanks everyone and goodbye. <laughs>